Good morning. Bo, could you please read the problem? And Bobby, could you please translate? Flippin' physics. On a level surface, a street hockey puck is given an initial velocity of negative 3.2 meters per second and slides to a stop. Please stop. Velocity initial equals negative 3.2 meters per second and velocity final equals zero. Bo, please continue. If the coefficient of kinetic friction between the puck and the surface is 0 0.60, how far did the puck slide? Mu k equals 0 0.60 and delta x equals question mark, although it's just how far, so just the magnitude of the displacement. I want my two dollars. Correct. Bobby, why is the initial velocity of the puck negative? Because the puck is moving to the left? Yes, the initial velocity is negative because the puck is moving to the left. Now, we have solved problems like this before using Newton's second law and the uniformly accelerated motion equations. However, today we are going to use the equation work due to friction equals change in mechanical energy to solve this problem. Billy, how do we know we can use this equation to solve this problem? Uh, because there is work done by the force of friction. However, th there is no work done by a force applied. Yes, we can use the work due to friction equals change in mechanical energy equation when there is work done by friction. However, there is no work done by the force applied. Bo, could you please expand the work due to friction equation? Okay. Work due to friction equals force of kinetic friction times displacement times cosine theta, and the change in mechanical energy equals mechanical energy final minus mechanical energy initial. Billy, before we can use this equation... You cut your hair. Nope. Yes, you did, Bo. You, you cut your hair. No, I did not. Bo did not cut his hair. Bo got his hair cut. So did I. Can we get back to the physics, please? Billy, before we can use this equation, what do we need to do? We need to identify the locations of the initial and final points and the horizontal zero line. Then could you all please identify those? Okay, let's, let's set the initial point where the puck leaves your hand. And the final point where the puck stops. And let's set the horizontal zero line at the height of the center of mass of the puck. Great. Now we can work with the equation. Bobby, what can we do with the left-hand side? We can substitute the coefficient of kinetic friction times force normal for the force of kinetic friction. And, and the displacement of the puck is to the left and the force of kinetic friction is to the right. And the angle between those two directions is 180 degrees. So theta equals 180 degrees. All right, now. The right-hand side of this equation is very similar to conservation of mechanical energy. And we have worked a lot by now with conservation of mechanical energy. We've even taken a quiz on conservation of mechanical energy, which means at this point, I'm going to say we can graduate. And rather than listing all the energies which could possibly be there, we're only going to list the energies which actually are there. Is everybody okay with that? I'm okay it's with that. Time. Can we still list all the energies if we feel more comfortable doing it that way? Absolutely, Bobby. If you would like to, you may still list all the energies which could possibly be there, but you do not have to. Billy, could you please tell me initially and finally which energies are there and are not there and why? Okay. There is no spring, so no elastic potential energy, initial or final. Um, the height of the puck is zero both initially and finally, so there is no gravitational potential energy at all. The final velocity of the puck is zero, so the kinetic energy final is zero. H however, the initial velocity of the puck is not zero, so the initial kinetic energy is not zero. And that, that, is that really true? There is no final mechanical energy and the only energy initial is the kinetic energy? Yes, that is true. There is zero final mechanical energy, and the only initial mechanical energy is kinetic energy, so zero minus one-half mass times velocity initial squared. But 
where did all that initial kinetic energy go? Oh, you can hear it. Some of the kinetic energy becomes sound. And some of the kinetic energy becomes heat. The, the puck is warmer after sliding along the table. Just like your hands heat up when you rub them together. Yes, all that initial kinetic energy is dissipated as heat and sound. So let's put that equation in our equation holster. And Bo, please go through the equation from left to right and tell me which variables we do and do not know. We know the coefficient of kinetic friction. We don't know the force normal or the displacement. The cosine of 180 degrees is negative one. We don't know the mass of the puck. We do know the velocity initial. Oh, <laughs> we need to draw a free body diagram and sum the forces to solve for the force normal, right? Correct. Bobby, could you please do that? Sure. The, the force normal is up. The force of gravity is down. The force of kinetic friction is to the right. And the force applied by your hand is to the left. So you're talking about the force applied by your hand. Right, sorry, your, your hand is not touching the puck while it is sliding to a stop, so there is no force applied in the free body diagram. Sorry. Bobby, you don't need to apologize. That happens all the time. Oh, okay. We can sum the forces in the y direction. The net force in the y direction equals force normal minus force of gravity, and the net force in the y direction also equals mass times acceleration in the y direction. Uh, because the puck does not move up or down, the acceleration in the y direction is zero. Therefore, the force normal equals the force of gravity, which equals mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Bo, please keep going. Using the equation from the equation holster, we can substitute mass times acceleration due to gravity for force normal. And wait for it. Everybody brought negative mass to the party. Everybody brought mass. 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 And we are left with the coefficient of kinetic friction times the acceleration due to gravity times displacement is equal to one half times the initial velocity squared. Bo, please keep going. Divide both sides by acceleration due to gravity and the coefficient of kinetic friction to get displacement equals velocity initial squared divided by the quantity two times acceleration due to gravity times the coefficient of kinetic friction. With numbers, that is the quantity negative 3.2 squared divided by the quantity 2 times 9.81 times 0 0.60, which works out to be 0 0.869861, or with two significant digits, 0 0.87 meters. Yes. Thank you very much Wait for... Wait a second. The, the puck moves to the left. The displacement should be negative. Our answer should be negative. <laughs> I, I give up. Why does this always happen? Why can't we just get the right answer? Bobby, chill out. We got the right answer. That is true, Bo. Please explain. When using the work equation, you only use magnitudes of the force and the displacement. So if you solve for the force or the displacement in the work equation you will only get the magnitude of that variable. Right, so our answer is the magnitude of the displacement of the puck, which is the answer to how far the puck slid. Our answer is correct. Absolutely. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you. Does anybody know where my pencil is?